But you see, the greatest miracles, the ones that God always performs, if we ask Him in faith, involve spiritual disabilities, not physical ones. Did you get that point? If you slept through that one, nothing else is going to make any sense this morning. The greatest miracles, the ones that God always, 100% of the time, heals in this life if we ask Him to, our spiritual disabilities. And this is my burden this morning. Jesus is sighing. Did you notice He sighed when He saw the deaf mute? He is sighing in heaven today over those who are limited by spiritual deafness and spiritual speech impediments. Sighing and ready to heal each and every one today who will ask Him with a repentant and expectant heart to heal them. The greatest miracles do not involve healing disease or birth defects. Rather, the greatest miracles transform us from glory to glory into the very image of the Lord Jesus Christ. These miracles happen via the hearing of comfort, of correction, and of calling in God's Word. And this hearing does not come to us naturally, folks. In fact, the Bible says that the natural man is quite deaf to spiritual things. But the spiritual man, who has been transformed by an infusion of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the spiritual man hears the things of God. There's an in-between category, though, that Paul talks about. The not the unsaved natural man who can't hear. Or the saved spiritual man who does hear. But a person that got saved, but is not consecrated to the Lord. It's called a carnal man. Of all men, most miserable. And they are hearing the things of God, but they're still hearing the things of this world. And they can't make up their mind which one they want. To follow. This transformation from glory to glory into the very image of Jesus Christ is accelerated us in us and then stimulated in others when we open our mouths to tell people about the greatness of what Jesus has done for us and about what he wants to do for them. Neither does this speaking come naturally to most of us either. It's as if in our sinful condition we were born deaf and mute concerning the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to speak to you a few minutes this morning both about our hearing and about our speaking on spiritual Matters. Let's start with hearing. All through the Old Testament, the prophets continually spoke to the people of God and told them, you don't hear the message. You're spiritually deaf. For example, in Ezekiel 12, 2, God spoke through him, Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house which has eyes to see, but they refuse to see, and they have ears to hear, but they refuse to hear. They are a rebellious house. And there is something rebellious about sin that refuses to hear the things of God. There is a connection throughout Scripture between our heart, which is our, a type of our spirit, the part of us that is born in sin and that needs to be redeemed, the part of us that's going to exist forever, either in eternal life in heaven or eternal death in hell. There is a connection between our heart and our hearing and our ears. There is a hard heart discussed in Scripture. 
that refuses the things of God, that is rebellious, that is calloused. And then there is a broken, humble, contrite heart that will hear and heed the things of God. Jesus, while on this earth, said ten separate times in the gospel these exact words. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear what? The truth of the gospel. That we're all sinners in need of a Savior. And there is only one name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. And that is the name of the one who shed his blood on a cross for us. Jesus Christ. Paul made this same point in a letter to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4. He said there a time will come, and I believe that time is now, when they will not endure sound doctrine, that is the gospel, but according to their own desires, their own lust, because they have what? Itching ears. They will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and be turned aside or apply their ears to Fables, lies. Lies take us to hell. The gospel takes us to heaven. Be careful what we hear, little ears. What are we hearing? This past week on the internet there was a question posted by Terry Trammell. He said, uh, what have you been wanting to hear preach for a long time and haven't? And there must have been 50 people who responded. Over three-fourths said the same thing. Hell. They have been longing to hear a message on hell. They're not hearing a message on hell. Now, every one of the people who responded belongs to a church that believes in heaven and in hell as literal places. Why aren't we preaching it? I'll give you another example. Some folks refuse to settle down in one place and hear the whole counsel of the Word of God. They just want bits and pieces of it. And I heard a prominent preacher on faith on television many years ago. His name was Fred Price, and I don't advocate much of what Dr. Price preaches, I believe in faith, but I'll never forget this story. He said he was preaching in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and he had been there about five times over the last couple of years in different mega church settings. He said a woman came up to him after he preached a message on faith, and she said to him, oh, Dr. Price, I love your preaching on faith. I heard you, uh, this is the fifth time I heard you. I heard you here and then I heard you when I used to go to so-and-so's church. And then I heard you a few months ago when I was at so-and-so's. And she'd been, in every church she'd been to, that's where she was. And he looked at her, and I know this had to be the Holy Spirit. And he said, so in other words, sister, what you're saying is you're no good to anybody. <laughs> what did he mean by that? He said, because all she wanted was good news of faith. And when the rest of the whole counsel of God was presented in the local church. She took off because it was uncomfortable and she went somewhere else where she could hear about faith and then when they started to preach on commitment, she took off over here where she could hear about faith and then when they started to preach about suffering, she took off and went over here where she could hear about faith and then when they preached about commitment or tithing, she took off. <clears throat> Itching ears. 